seeing quarantine heat. Getting old fast and you're losing steam. Break out a piece of paper, crayons, and a pencil. Tune in Mr. Allison's YouTube channel. So Kobe, 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 you don't bother me. Gonna make some art for everyone to see. Hi, boys and girls. Hi. Ready? Three, two, one. You know what to do. Zero. Eyes and smiles and frozen. Students, nice job, boys and girls. All right, we have a lot to talk about today. We're talking about a brand new artist. And this is someone that I'm sure you have heard his name or you're aware of, and or maybe you even know all about him. His name is Vincent Van Gogh. And take a look at this uh, first slide I have for you. This is some of his most famous work right here. This is called The Starry Night. And I've got two of these copies hanging up in the uh, classroom right now. This is a self-portrait of him. And um, I'm very excited to talk about Vincent Van Gogh today. So let's begin. Here we go. All right, so Vincent Van Gogh. We're gonna learn about his life, his artwork, his techniques, and we're gonna create a Van Gogh-inspired work today, similar to his Starry Night. Vincent was born in 1853 in the Netherlands or in Holland, and he died in 1890 in France at just 37 years old. So if you look down here, you'll see a picture of him, a pencil drawing that he did of himself when he was in his 20s, and if you look over to the map, you'll see Western Europe with a flag right at the Netherlands, also known as Holland. And we've got Italy over here. We've got Portugal, Spain, France, uh, Switzerland, Austria, Germany, Belgium, the UK and England, and the Netherlands right there. So he had one brother who was a year younger than him, and his name was Theo. We're going to talk about him a lot during the presentation. And he helped out Vincent van Gogh a lot. Um, okay, so before Van Gogh became an artist, he had a few jobs, and unfortunately, he didn't do very well at any of those jobs, and he was fired from all of them. He was a teacher, he was a bookstore uh, worker, he worked in a bookstore, he was a preacher for a while, just like his father, and he worked at an art gallery selling artwork. you think he'd be good at that. So here are some of Van Gogh's early drawings and paintings, but before we take a look at them, I'd like you to look at this photograph of Vincent Van Gogh when he was maybe 11, 12, 13, and the camera had just been developed soon before that, so it was really exciting to get photographs taken of you at the time. And here are some of his early drawings. I just wanted to quickly pass by those, take a look at those. You can see some of the swirling patterns that he did to show movement and the short little lines like he later did in his paintings with the short brush strokes. So you can see where he was coming from. All right, so his early paintings were a lot different than what he's famous for. They were very dark and very sad and overall uh, mood of sadness and depression. And uh, these weren't widely liked back then. <laughs> so people wouldn't buy these paintings. They didn't like it at that time while uh, the style of Impressionism was just coming to be. So some more dark colors here with the, uh, this is called the Potato Eaters. These are a group of ladies who lived together who uh, didn't have a lot of money and they were just eating potatoes that night that he painted this picture. Some more dark colors in his early work that people didn't really care for at the time. And he started painting, as I said, when he was 27 years old. And remember, he died when he was 37, so he only painted for 10 years, 10 short years. So all the masterpieces that are known today, created by Vincent Van Gogh, happened in those last 10 years. In fact, most of them happened in his last year and a half, two years. Uh, he did not take very good care of himself, and he spent all of his money on paints and canvases. So his brother Theo used to help him out a lot financially. He owned an art gallery, and so he had some money and he would give that to Vincent when he could to help him out. When Vincent st first started painting, he painted those sad and poor colors and uh, with poor people and peasant people in the, in the subject matter. And uh, people, like I said, people weren't really caring for that style at the time. So here's a picture of Theo, his brother, a year younger than him, and Vincent. Look how similar they look. And as I said, his brother owned an art gallery in Paris where all art was happening at the time. The new art movement of Impressionism was happening at the time there in Paris, France. And he tried to sell Vincent's artwork in his art studio 
and guess what it wasn't selling and he would tell vincent hey brother you just your paintings are too dark and too gloomy people aren't wanting that right now and so vincent took note of that Theo introduced Vincent to many painters who later became world famous artists like Gauguin and Pissarro and George Seurat and more. So remember Theo told Vincent, hey, your paintings are too dark. Well, as, as Vincent is walking down the streets going to buy more paint, he stumbles into uh, a man selling Japanese artwork. And here are some pictures of some Japanese artwork of the time and if you notice look at the bright colors they weren't dark colors like what vincent was doing at the time and what his brother was telling him not to do in fact they're real bright colors and look at the water he showed a lot the water showed lots of movement with all the little twists and turns in here also twists and turns and curves over the rocks here so he, vincent van gogh loved the colors and loved the movement of the water and he decided right then, okay, with what Theo is telling me and what I see and I like of this Japanese artwork and this new impressionism that he's just learning about, he's going to change his style of art. And look, at his art soon became uh, much less gloomy and full of bright colors and his characteristically short brush strokes and lines and, and just became beautiful. Van Gogh was very emotional. So Van Gogh was a very emotional per, uh, person. In fact, we'll talk about it later, but he had a lot of uh, illnesses and problems and troubles in his life and uh, that led to that. But he was a very emotional person and he had lots of trouble com controlling his feelings and his emotional outbursts. Vincent uh, became good friends with the artist Paul Gauguin that his brother Theo introduced him to. And they got into an argument just before Christmas one day, and he became, Van Gogh became very, very, very upset. And many people believe this is why he cut off the top, actually it's the bottom portion of his right ear after this argument. Others say that this happened after being rejected by a girlfriend. He had uh, girlfriends over his lifetime during his 37 years. He had proposed to four of them at different times and they all had rejected him. So he was very upset about rejection and very emotional about that. So which story is true? I don't know. So I mentioned about the argument with him and Paul Gauguin. Well, there in this yellow house, they were roommates sharing the expense of that, expenses of that house. And uh, this is in 1887 to 1888 in uh, a town, Arlis, in the south of France. And here is a picture of Gauguin. Vincent van Gogh painted Gauguin here and painted himself here. Look how Vincent is looking with less hair, looking much skinnier. He wasn't eating much, didn't have any money, and um, he was painting all the time, but uh, he was really neglecting himself. So that's a little house. This is his bedroom right here, Van Gogh's bedroom. And this is also his bedroom from the inside. If you're in fifth grade, you'll notice on your Eureka math book that this painting is on there. And this is Van Gogh's painting of his own bedroom done in 1887. Van Gogh painted a series of sunflowers. And if you notice, he didn't want to paint the sunflowers um, perfect like everybody was doing at the time. In fact, he painted them wilting and dying. Perhaps this is because he was suffering from depression himself. So Van Gogh's painting style is changing at this point and he's now entering, he's going from impressionism to post-impressionism. Post means after. And so it's the next step. He's taking impressionism to the next level. So impressionism, uh, this is a style that came after this is a style that came after the camera was developed. Before the camera was developed, um, if you wanted a picture, or you, you couldn't have a picture because there was no camera, right? So if you wanted a, a self-portrait, a portrait of your family, you had to hire an artist who could paint very realistic paintings. And they would, they, you would sit there and pose for this artist for hours and hours and hours while this artist painted a very realistic painting of you. But then the camera was developed. So now if somebody wanted a portrait, just take a quick picture, develop it, and there you go. So the style of art was changing from, they didn't need the very realistic style of art anymore to something more imaginative and more creative. 
and that's where impressionism came from. So it was no longer um, the no longer was did they need an, uh, a snapshot, a photograph looking painting of a landscape, for instance. Now it could be someone's impression of what that landscape looked like. It could be more creative, like this. Just look at how uh, look at how Van Gogh was creative with his impressionism, which led into post-impressionism because he was so creative and he was so imaginative. Look how he used the short brush strokes in his face. It almost looks like his face has hair on it, but he used these short brush strokes of multiple colors. So when you stand back, it makes the shadows in here, the darker colors and the white, and it just looks wonderful. Look at, look at the short brush strokes here and down here. We'll be mentioning those later. Look at the swirling patterns showing movement behind Vincent Van Gogh and this self-portrait over here, post-impressionism. So post-impressionism um, had looser brush techniques, often had shorter brush strokes. They weren't so concerned with shadows and shading and making it look realistic. They used brighter rhythmic and matching color schemes. They were more expressive and imaginative and much more attention given to trying to show movement in the painting. Do you see movement here? All right, I'm just teasing with you. Yes, it's actually moving. But in a still painting, what uh, the artist would have to do, and Van Gogh would have to do in this case, is make swirls and curvy lines and, and uh, in different directions to show that the wind was moving the object, the cypress tree, the bush, or the wheat in the fields. So let's go back to the short brush strokes. So you see the little short lines here, little short lines that create the whole entire painting. Look at the direction of those lines. So that was very characteristic of Vincent Van Gogh. You can see him over here as well. You can see him here also, the short little dashes. See the short little dashes or short little lines? The reason why I'm focusing on that is because that's what you're gonna be doing today with crayon. And I just love this painting, I had to throw it in there. So such a sad story. While Vincent Van Gogh was alive, he wasn't rich. He wasn't famous. He didn't receive much notoriety for being uh, a talented artist. In fact, he didn't sell any paintings except for this one painting, the Red Vine uh, Vineyard. So this painting was the only painting he sold. And it wasn't until uh, towards the very end of his life, he made $436. That's it from this painting. I'm sure it was worth more back then, $436. But that's all he made. The only painting he ever sold. Good trivia question there. All right, but the 30 years after he died, his paintings became very, very famous and very, very well known and sold for lots of money 30 years after his death. This became his most famous painting, The Starry Night, painted in 1889. Remember, he died in 1890. He painted the scene of the local town in night skies. He looked outside of his bedroom window while in a mental health hospital, a mental institution. It is believed to have taken him only two days to complete this painting, The Starry Night. All right, so I mentioned mental institution or mental hospital. So after Van Gogh cut off part of his ear, uh, his brother wanted him to check into this mental institution, this hospital for the clinically and mentally insane because he was worried about him. Van Gogh's now starting to hurt himself. Uh, he is losing his sanity and uh, it's become, he's becoming a danger to himself and to other people. So he checked into this mental health hospital. Uh, he had a very bad habit of eating paint chips and licking his brushes. So let me talk about that. So Vincent Van Gogh, all right, he, had, uh, he was suffering from a lot of problems and one of them was obsessive compulsive disorder. So he was obsessed with painting. That was what he was obsessed about. So he would paint all the time, day and night, and long into the night until he passed out. He would paint through meals. He wouldn't eat meals. Instead, <clears throat> what he would do, whether consciously or not, is he would take a little spilled paint that had dried, and it was like a, he would pull off like a rubbery paint chip, and he would chew on that. And eventually, he started swallowing that, swallowing that, and eating that, and he would lick his brushes. And not only is that gross and it can make you sick to your stomach, but back then paint had lead in it. And lead can cause, when it gets into your bloodstream, can cause very serious 
uh, health problems and it can make you go um, insane. It can make you go crazy. And, and, uh, and that's what happened to him. So we think, so he suffered from this mental illness, uh, most likely because of the lead paints that he was eating. Uh, possibly there was an underlying condition that caused, uh, that uh, contributed to that. So he continued to paint while he was in the hospital uh, for the uh, clinically insane, called the insane asylum. And he actually produced, he was only in there for about a year and a half before he died. And he produced most of his most famous artwork during that time period, that year and a half he was in there. So his style is very unique with the swirls and the spirals and the vivid colors and lots of movement as we talked about. And while in, there in the asylum, he produced The Starry Night, just one year before he died, his most famous painting, and the one that we're going to be really looking closely at today. And this was his first painting that he painted when he got there, and that's become very famous. This is another famous painting of, of the mountains behind the institution. And those last bunch of paintings started to become very turbulent and intense. And people say this is because he was uh, getting deeper, deeper, and deeper into losing his sanity. Very sad. This is the saddest of them all. So this was his very last painting, The Wheat Fields with Crows. He painted this in July of 1890, and he also died in July of 1890. Less than two weeks um, after painting this painting, he died. And he died of... Uh, self-inflicted gun wounds, um, ha which happened actually in that field. So some say, you know, he knew this was going to happen, and that's why he's got the crows who were scattering, and, um, but we don't know. And we don't know exactly how, uh, how he shot himself, accident on purpose, if, if he was uh, maybe shooting at some birds, hunting. We don't know. But um, it's a sad, sad story, very tragic. So that was in 1890. So, so these are some of Van Gogh's issues and troubles that he had. He had severe bouts of depression, very, very sad, deep depression. He was epileptic, so he had seizures um, at times. He took medicine for those seizures and for that epilepsy, and that caused these yellow halos to, to um, kind of uh, surround things. And we think that's where he got his ideas to do the yellow around the stars and the starry night. Uh, he had the mental illness that we talked about, obviously that was uh, very, very controlling and it, he needed full-time psychiatric care and that's why he went into the hospital. He had lead poisoning, which possibly uh, contributed to that mental illness. He had bipolar disorder causing sw uh, swinging manic emotions and mood swings. He had obsessive compulsive disorder and hypographia, which is a type of that and that causes a need to constantly write and paint all of the time. And he was very stressed because he had endless financial problems and he was a burden on Theo and he didn't like that. Oh, look at this, all of his self portraits. So now it's time to face your pop quiz to see what you remember. It's time to show what you know. All right, boys and girls, let's do this very quickly. You can pause this at home and I will pause this video here. Number one, where and when was Vincent Van Gogh born? If you said the Netherlands in 1853, then you got it. Number two, where and when did he die? France, 1890. Number three, what, what jobs did Van Gogh do before becoming an artist? He's a teacher, worked at a bookstore, preacher, and he worked in an art gallery. Number four, describe his color choices in his early artwork. Dark, sad, depressing. Number five, how did, dis how did discovering Japanese artwork change his life? He noticed that he really liked the bright colors in the artwork and he liked the, um, the, the water and how it showed movement. And so that made him reflect on his own artwork and change his style of art. Number six, Tell me about Van Gogh's post-impressionism style of art painting techniques. So he started using short brush strokes, uh, bolder colors, more imaginative, brighter colors, and showing more movement in his painting. Number seven, discuss Van Gogh's troubles and illnesses, and he had quite a, bu a bunch of them. Remember, we had he had bipolar disorder, he had uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, he mental illness, um, epilepsy, poisoning from the uh the seizure medication 
Uh, and they're in depression. All right, let's see. Number eight. What do you think Van Gogh would be like as a friend? I can't answer that for you, but I'm sure you would learn a lot about art, wouldn't you? Number nine, how many years did he paint? And that was just 10 short years from 27, when he was 27 to when he was 37. Number 10, where was he when he created the most famous painting, The Starry Night? Great trivia question. He was in the mental institution. He was looking out his, be his bedroom window and that was the view he had. All right, so today's Van Gogh inspired art activity is the starry night that's what we're gonna do today guys and this project will take easily two art classes to do today you're gonna need pencil a, wa a watercolor paper and crayons and if you're at home you don't have watercolor paper or some sort of thick car um, card stock or some kind of paper or cardboard and then that's okay you might not be able to do this last step where we use watercolor to wash over our crayon as a crayon resist but, um, but that's still okay. But if you have watercolor paper, that's even better. All right, so the first thing you're, do, you're gonna do, boys and girls, is you're going to take that paper, hold it landscape, wide man, and you're going to put that paper up to about here, and this is gonna be your cypress tree. You're gonna trace around your hand, and right around here, this finger or this finger, you're gonna kind of extend that up a little bit to make it look more like a tree. Maybe, maybe even make some points on the end to make it look a little bit more like a tree. Your next step is you're going to draw the horizon line. You see this line that goes, uh, starts at this edge, and then you stop, you pick up your pencil, pick it up on the other side of the tree, and go straight across to the other edge. Make sure to leave a lot of room in the sky for your starry night sky, since that's what this painting is all about, or this picture is all about. But don't forget to leave some room for your town down below. Your mountains, don't make your mountains too tall, but you're going to start on this side. You're going to come up at an angle, and you're gonna round off that angle and down at about the same angle going down. And you're gonna do the same thing right here and maybe another two or three mountains like that. Step three, you're gonna draw your moon. So this is how I believe he did it. I believe he very, very lightly, please do this very, very lightly guys, because you don't wanna see your, uh, your pencil lines from behind your crayon. You're gonna go over this with a yellow crayon, but you'll see right through that yellow crayon, you'll see your pencil if you push too hard. So push very, very lightly. I believe he made a circle first, and then he made this crescent shape or this inner circle shape right here to create the crescent moon. Next, you're gonna use a yellow crayon and you're gonna make short dashes around your moon. Just keep going close together. Those dashes should be pretty close together and short. And very, very, very important, push very hard with that crayon. Try to get as much of that wax from the crayon onto the paper. In fact, in class, I'm showing everybody to go one, two, three, four for every dash. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, just to make sure you get as much crayon on the paper as possible. And the reason for that is because afterwards we're going to come over with some watercolor, some dark blue watercolor. We're going to wash over the whole paper and that watercolor won't stick to crayon if you put a big, heavy, thick layer of crayon on there. So that's why each dash has to have a lot of crayons. Push really hard. And the next step some orange going around your yellow and maybe inside your moon a little bit. And this is probably as far as you're gonna get today. In fact, I'd rather you didn't go on any further. Just stop right here and we'll pick it up at the end of next week. This is a very long video and I'm very thankful for you paying attention and I can't wait to see your artwork, boys and girls. Here's what it's gonna look like when, you get, when you're done before we watercolor. Here's another example of the palm tree. And that's it, boys and girls. That's the end for today. And I hope you enjoyed learning about Vincent Van Gogh. All right, boys and girls, have a great day. Sitting in your house in quarantine, getting old fast and you're losing steam. Break out a piece of paper, crayons, and a pencil. Tune in Mr. Allison's YouTube channel. So COVID, 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 you don't bother me. Gonna make some art for everyone to see.